Hi, welcome to this week's video. <coughs> this is another experimental piece that I've been working on, trying to get um, much more colour in the textured pieces and then a black background. I'm not entirely happy with it. There's still quite a bit of depth left in the blank. So today, I'm just going to turn this off, just show you how easy it is to get rid of something and go on to something else from it. Um, I'll lose a little bit of a little bit of depth, but but not not so much. Probably I'm going to reshape the middle piece as well. Um, I think I'm going to go for another one that I colour entirely uh, today, and uh, hopefully the results will be pleasing, <laughs> satisfying, and uh, and better than this. Anyway, hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so it's been uh, turned off. All the old texture and colour is gone. Um, sanded down through the grits down to 400. And nasty split that uh, I'm sure you saw. Um, bit of branch probably growing through, but um, I filled that, sealed it with CA glue. And the chestnut stains that I use say to put them on un untreated wood. And I think that's fine if you're wanting the colour to soak through. Uh, I don't want it to come through onto the backside. Sometimes where it's thin, it can it can it can wick its way through. So it has had a coat of sanding sealer, um, chestnut acrylic sanding sealer from the aerosol, and uh, I've just cut that back with one of the chestnut pads. Oh, the yellow one. Um, so it's all ready now for spraying. Okay, here I am the next day, and the platter's dried overnight. This had almost 24 hours drying. Um, and what I need to do now is to just seal the colour. And I put some chestnut acrylic sanding sealer over the top. It seems to help, as I think I said yesterday, seems to help with the, with the final coat of lacquer going on over the top. All right, so the next step is now that the acrylic sanding sealer is dry, um, clear lacquer from a, a brand called High Coat. I'm going to put about three, maybe four coats of this on, and it recommends to leave it about 15 minutes between, uh, between coats. So I should be able to get that done this evening, <coughs> coming in and out. Okay, we'll get the first coat on. Uh, coming on for the third coat of the lacquer now, being disciplined and not 
well trying not to overspray and getting runs so far so good and between each coat just twist it round a little bit so it's the spray is going to end up even all around the whole uh, circumference of the platter. Mask back on and lots of shaking. Okay, back for one more coat. It's touch dry. Uh, you can see perhaps the shine building up. I hold this there, get a bit of a reflection. It's a little rough in places, especially round, round here, round the rim, between the rim and the bowl. But I'll be able to cut that back and finish it off. But it needs 24 hours drying. One or two places, just a little tacky actually. I think this will be the last coat for tonight. I think this is coat four. Okay. Resist the temptation to do another pass. Okay. Okay, the lacquer's been on for a couple of days now. So it's perfectly dry and I'm just going to use some compound just to um, flatten it down a little and then put a final polish on. There are a couple of areas in here that are a little rough to touch. So obviously I'm still learning how to, uh, how to apply this stuff properly. Um, the colours do look so much nicer in real life <laughs> than you're seeing at the moment. Um, but the, the, the better quality pictures at the end might convince you of that. So I'm going to show you how I now uh, move on to the next stage of finishing so that I can get this all smooth and then bring it to a nice shine. And this is what I use, uh, Ferrecla G6 paste compound. I have no experience of finishing car bodies. So if I'm doing this completely wrong, feel free to give me some advice in the comments. But I have found that it does give me good results. Um, I use a drill with a foam pad on. Uh, this was about four or five pounds from Amazon. There's a flat pad and a contoured pad. And I just put a bit of the compound on, a bit of water, put it in the drill, and then a slowish sort of speed, just around the whole platter, um, and then dry it off and then buffing. Just start off with a bit on the pad, spray a bottle of water just to help loosen the paste and move it around. Now just wiping that off with a slightly damp kitchen roll. Okay, that's improved the feel of it a lot. You can feel the, you know, it's not glass smooth. Uh, there's a quite a lot of open grain in this part of it, which you can see coming through but I think that texture feels quite nice, but the finish is, there was a bit of roughness in the finish there, but that, that's all gone now. So the last stage, just to try to cut down on fingerprints, is some microcrystalline wax. Uh, chestnuts one that I'm using. There are other makes, I believe. Um, I'm going to polish it off with a mop because I find if I, if I put this on and spin it, I do get some lines sometimes. This just helps to break down that um, uniformity that comes if you spin something on a lathe and you hold a piece of cloth against it. Just going to move it across. Very thin coat of wax is all that's needed. Just wiping it on with a piece of kitchen roll. 
making sure covering the whole bowl and I'm going to leave that a few minutes then just to finish off wipe of a cloth then it's hand finished isn't it <laughs> there we go okay let's get it out of the chuck So there it is, another finished piece. This is the second one that I've coloured completely and I'm enjoying having a larger canvas as it were to work on. It's quite difficult to photograph it with so much gloss on it but I hope these close-ups give you some idea of the finished texture in the paint and the pattern on the wood and a uh, fun project. Thanks very much.